My church needs a stand to put on the communion table to hold the Bible. I'm going to build them one out of oak. Let's get started. I'm making this Bible stand for a specific Bible. So I've got the dimensions of the Bible, and now I'm just going to sketch up a little drawing so that I make sure I get everything planned out properly. Now with the miter saw tilted to 45 degrees, I'm going to start cutting all four sides of the Bible holder. I've placed a clamp on my fence so that I can make repeated cuts the exact same length without having to measure every time. You can see how the 45 degree angles come together in a box. Now we've got to start cutting our angles on the front. I've figured out the angle I want, which is a 5 degree angle, and I've drawn the lines where to cut. Now I'm just freehanding this on the table saw. This can be very dangerous, so if you do this, please be careful. If you get the wood twisted in the least bit, it can pinch the saw blade and throw it back at you, or pull your hands into the blade. So be very, very careful. Here's our front piece. Now for the side pieces, we're using our miter saw. I wasn't sure what this angle was, so I used this inclinometer to figure out it was 24 degrees. Now when cutting the V in the back piece of our Bible holder, we also have to tip our saw to 24 degrees to match the slope on the sides. Now since my table saw only tips one way from center, I had to do the other cut with a circular saw, also tipped to 24 degrees. And then, being careful not to overcut, I finish it up with the handsaw. Now it's time for a little assembly. With some glue on our miter joints, we're going to tack it together with a few brads. You may be able to see the bevel on the back piece of the box when I put it together here. Notice it matches the slope of the sides. Now, with some flat pieces, we're going to biscuit and glue these together. These are going to be the surface where the Bible sits. Once they dry overnight, we've tipped the saw again to 5 degrees, and we're cutting one edge of each one. This is where they will meet in the middle of the V. Now, with the saw back to 90 degrees, we're trimming up the heights of them. Now I want a specific overhang on the front of this. So I've set up stops, and when I put these together and rest them against the stops, that gives me the perfect overhang. Now I took them back apart so I could add a little glue to all these surfaces. And now a little glue where the two panels meet. And we carefully fit them together making sure they're against the stops, and we'll put a couple of brad nails in them just to hold them while the glue dries. Now we're making a piece of trim that goes on the front edge of the Bible surface and sticks up slightly so that the Bible won't slide off. Where these two pieces meet has to be five degree angles. So once we get those cut and put a little glue on, we'll line it up and shoot a couple of pin nails in it to hold it. The five degree angle meets perfectly in the middle. Next, I want to make a beaded trim to go around all the edges of the Bible holder. I first start by ripping down some stock and then planing it flat to get all the saw marks off. Then with a beading router bit in my router table, I'm going to run a bead down one edge and then down the other edge. 
and there you can see the beads on either edge of this piece. But we don't need this whole piece this wide, so what we're going to do is we're going to rip each of the beads off of the board. So each board gives us two bead moldings. Now before we cut our miters, we need to think about these compound angles. This piece is running along the 5 degree V, but it still meets the corner and needs to have a 45 degree angle there. The piece on the side is running along the 24 degree side, but it still needs to miter at 45. So on our compound miter saw, we've turned the miter to 24 and the bevel to 45. And then we do the same thing when we're cutting the 5 degree side. And if done properly, they'll meet up perfectly in the corner. Now we're using pin nails. These are 23 gauge and literally the size of a straight pin. They're so tiny, they don't even have a head, and so you don't even have to fill the holes when you're done. To show you just how tiny a pin nail is, I've set up this comparison. This is the 23 gauge pin nail versus an 18 gauge brad nail, which is pretty small in itself. And to show you even further, this is a thumbtack. This is my tooth. This is a dime. This is a penny. This is a number 20 biscuit, a clothes pin, a number two pencil, an artificial hip joint, a Tennessee license plate, a tail rotor from a helicopter, a 24 inch pipe wrench, a 36 inch pipe wrench, a 48 inch pipe wrench, and a 56 inch flat screen TV. We continue nailing our bead trim around, making sure we cut our angles correctly as we go. If you take your time and think about it, it's really not all that hard to do. We're also going to nail some around the bottom edge. These are a whole lot easier because they're just straight 45 degree cuts. Now I want to put a bottom on this thing. I don't like leaving it hollow up inside. So what I'm doing is I'm going to nail on some cleats. I'm using this piece of plywood that's 3 8 thick as a spacer so that all the cleats are inset from the bottom the exact same distance. You'll see why this matters in just a second. Now once all those are in, we're going to lay in our bottom. This bottom is slightly thinner than the spacer we used, letting it inset a little from the bottom. The reason we inset it is because we're going to put these non-skid rubber feet on it and I want them to be hidden mostly, but stick down ever so slightly from the bottom. All these measurements were calculated when we figured out what kind of spacer to use. And from the profile, you can see they barely stick down, but enough to keep it from scooting. Now, we're using some color matched putty to fill all the holes that the brads left. Remember, the pin nails don't need to be filled. Now for a finish, we're just going to use a polyurethane. We're going to put on several coats of this. And here's the finished product. It turned out really, really nice. As we pan around, you can see our bead detail. This oak is just beautiful, and it matches the other wood at the front of the church. And here you can see it on the communion table, holding the Bible. This was a very nice addition to the communion table. And it's something that we didn't have before, and I'm glad I could help. Well, that turned out really nice, and it's been a really good addition to the communion table at church. You know, I struggled as to whether I should even do a video on this, because... I didn't want anybody to think that I was trying to get recognition for doing something nice for the church or, or you know, getting praise for doing something. Um, that's not why I do things. I do things for my church because I love my church and I love God and um, I really enjoy being able to help him out. I talked to the preacher and, and he's a, a watcher of my videos and he said I should put out a video. Um, I'm glad I did because this video, this project has some good lessons in compound angles on the miter saw and uh, trying to figure things out like that and uh, 
hopefully it helped somebody and gave somebody some insights on those. Um, kids, you think you're never going to use math when you get out of school. I use math all the time in the shop, including on this project. So, a uh, very important subject whether you think so or not. So, I appreciate you coming along, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.